The Faculty Center for Teaching and Learning, a la carte. When and how to use a rubric. When I first started teaching, I'm not so sure that I used my time as well as I could have. For any given unit, I taught, I collected assignments, and I graded them. When I was displeased with the quality of work that my students had produced, I needed to deal with their frustration and my frustration and explain what they had misunderstood. I would also take the time to cover key concepts once again. In an effort to be fair, I would often allow students to resubmit work. Of course, this meant that I spent a decent amount of time regrading. This was rather time consuming, and I often felt as though I was working significantly harder than my students. Eventually, I came to appreciate that after taking the time to introduce new content, I needed to explicitly model the skills I wanted my students to be able to demonstrate. I also came to appreciate the incredible value of building in opportunities for formative assessment so I could check in on students' work as they were completing a project. Instead of repeating myself over and over, I introduced a rubric to which students could refer as they worked. What I found was pretty incredible. By taking the time that I had once spent reteaching and regrading, and investing that time into effective modeling and check-ins, my students' work improved. And most importantly, the assessment process became far less frustrating for everyone involved. I spent less time regrading and more time engaging with my students in a meaningful way. So what exactly is a rubric? A rubric is a scoring scale that allows one to assess student performance against explicit learning criteria. An analytic rubric specifies the aspects of learning that are being assessed. It indicates the levels of mastery of each aspect of learning and offers descriptions of the features of a work product evident at each level of mastery. It may be helpful to think of rubrics as scaled sets of directions that indicate steps toward proficiency. Rubrics lend both clarity and consistency to the assessment process. Let's take a look at a specific example. This is a rubric that was created by the Association of American Colleges and Universities that may be used to assess students' written communication. The rubric identifies specific facets of learning and describes what each of these facets look like at each level of mastery. By focusing on a specific row, I can point out exactly what a student has accomplished and exactly what he or she needs to do next. In this example, I can show a student what is problematic with regard to her source selection, and I can stress that her next step will involve ensuring that all of her sources are both credible and relevant. By introducing a rubric at the beginning of an assignment, and by taking the time to review the specific content of the rubric with your class, students can move forward with a clear sense of what they need to work on and how they will be assessed. Once they have been properly introduced, rubrics may be used to structure the following. Check-ins at incremental deadlines, self or peer assessments, and writing or project conferences with you, the professor. Structuring opportunities for students to engage with your explicitly listed criteria allows rubrics to function as the learning tools they are. Thanks very much for sampling this Fictal a la carte module. To receive feedback on the rubrics you currently use or to get support creating new rubrics, please feel free to contact the Faculty Center for Teaching and Learning at fictal at mercy.edu.